Hello, my name is Anjani Segrist, and today I'm looking at Steve Jobs' astrology chart. And I want to just first look at this beautiful challenge that he has. Um, everything that is in red, everything that I've highlighted and some things I didn't highlight are known as dynamic aspects. The blue lines, which you can see a few of them here, are known as easy aspects. It's something that is giving energy naturally, helping um, just an easy flow of energy between two things. And all of these squares are known as dynamic aspects because they are creating friction. They're not easy. They're actually called hard angles. So he's got so many of those. And then oppositions are also known as hard aspects because they it's like a full moon point where it just really illuminates and makes whatever it's about, you know, if it's the sun and moon, it's about the the pole, the whole polarity between those two things. And it illuminates the whole night and makes everything, you know, it'll make even the person who doesn't care about the sun and moon, it'll make them pull over in the car to look at how beautiful that big bright moon is. So the oppositions are like that. Um, they increase and intensify the energy of whatever whatever the polarity is. So for him, he just has so much dynamic, challenging, you know, it looks like a world of inner turmoil almost. Um, so I want to just go over a few things. His north and south node, the north node being the destiny point, where he's going, the south node being where he's been, what he's mastered. So his would be, um, it's in the 11th house, so we would call this Aquarius. We don't pay attention to the sign because the node will transit through that sign all year long, but it'll be in the house for just a little while. So Aquarius, his mastery level, what he's already born being a master of is the Aquarius energy. So as a little kid, maybe being able to have that uh, meditative quality where he's able to connect to the cosmic consciousness and really liking being in that cosmic consciousness but his moon was in Aries so the the main things that we would notice about him is being a fighter being uh, very protective of whatever it is it looks like being protective of technology and information because that's what the Aquarius energy is about being fiercely protective of everything that had to do with that intangible cosmic consciousness. Then what he was here to learn about, where he was going, the destiny point for him is in Leo. So the fifth house is like Leo. So we would, we would say that he was here to show up big time, um, you know, being on the center stage of not only his life, but the center stage of the world. That's what um, the North Node in the fifth house relates to. Then we mix that with the rising sign. So he was here learning the Virgo tribe. And, and the Virgo tribe wants to, um, you know, there's, it's about sacred work very focused on the sacred work whatever and even in a relationship the work would come first that's what the virgo rising is about so for him it's the leo job in the virgo tribe so that sacred work and you know work comes first attitude and then showing up big on the stage of his life so i'm gonna go ahead and stop there just wanted to sort of touch a little bit on my beloved Steve Jobs and also um, I have his book here I haven't read all of it yet but I've read quite a bit of it because he's one of my biggest inspirations and I want to share the very last little section of the book and what they're talking about is at the end of his life um, I'll go ahead and read this whole thing 
he admitted that as he faced death, he might be overestimating the odds out of a desire to believe in an afterlife. And then he says, I like to think that something survives after you die. It's strange to think that you accumulate all this experience and maybe a little wisdom and it just goes away. So I really want to believe that something survives and maybe your consciousness endures. He fell silent for a long time. But on the other hand, perhaps it's like an on-off switch. Click, you're gone. Then he paused again and smiled slightly. Maybe that's why I never like to put on-off switches on Apple devices. That makes me cry every time I read it. So there you go, a little bit from Steve Jobs, a little bit about his chart. And thank you so much for watching the video. Please like, uh, subscribe to my channel. I look forward to connecting with you soon.